Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Thanks for joining me again here on the Whimsy Stamps channel. I am ending my Christmas slash holiday card making with a bit of a bang. <laughs> this one has all the bells and, wh bells and whistles and it was about three hours worth of crafty footage that I edited down to about 10 minutes. I've used a bunch of products and they'll all be linked and listed below, but if I've missed anything, please, please let me know. We are starting out with the Moose Tangle stamp as well as the Hexagon dies. And there are a couple others and um, if I don't remember to mention what I'm using through the video, again, it'll be listed and linked downstairs. So, I die cut two of the largest scallop hexagons and that's going to be our base, but I set them aside. And then I am using my Karen Brush Marker Pros again to color up this image. It is stamped with Versafine Onyx Black Ink and heat embossed with some black embossing powder. And um, I just like to use my work surface as my palette. I don't pull out anything fancy, no plates or anything like that, except up on the top, top right-ish there, you can see a little plate. And that's just what I use instead of a water cup. So I just spray a little bit of water on that and yeah. So when I use my work surface as a palette like this, I just scribble out some pigment from the from the various watercolor markers that I want to use. And then I kind of dilute it with some water and I pick it up with my paintbrush. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can use um, paintbrushes or watercolor brushes like this. And this is just the way that I prefer, especially when you're just laying down that, that first kind of wash of color. And for a lot of people, that's all they do. They do the wash and it's beautiful and they're done and they keep it moving. For other people, they, they do um, like all the different layers and the textures and get that depth and dimension. And there's no right or wrong. You be true to you, you do you and you color and you paint the way that, that brings you joy and brings you happiness. So I, like I said, I'm just using my work surface as my palette and just picking up the, the pigment as I go with my, um, with my paintbrush. And one of the things that I like to do when I do this is kind of mix and blend my colors. You can see that I've got two different shades of brown. Yep, scribbled out there. One I think was called Henna. I think this one is Sepia. The darker one is Sepia and the lighter one is, is Henna. And I like to kind of mix them and get, um, well, essentially a third or even fourth or fifth shade of brown out of that, depending on how you mix it. And if you're consistent, I'm not always consistent. I think you guys may already know that about me. If you don't, we're, we're learning it. <laughs> so yeah, now you can also take your pen to paper and I do that a time or two, but you really get um, a lot of saturated color and it's a really concentrated color. As you can see, I'm doing there to kind of get those darker shadows and, and those kind of deeper, deeper hues, if you will. So if I would have stopped around here, I think it would have been fine. Like I'm, I'm adding a little more dark than I probably should. Adding it to the hooves is not a big deal. I think it, it creates um, a difference. You can see the, the separation between the hooves and the shadows and, and that type of thing. But I go too far. Like I don't show it, but I really, I go too far. And we'll, we'll see where I ended up here in just a minute. Yeah, he looks like he got into like a, I don't know, a spray tan booth or something. But this is what I came back to this morning. So, but I can fix it, right? I can fix it. So this is, this is me settling in. I've got my cup of coffee and yes, so we are going to fix this together. So what I'm going to do essentially is lift some of that pigment. And the first thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to allow it to dry, allow it to fully dry. And then when you come back, you use a clean, you use clean, clear water and you add it little by little with the paintbrush as I'm doing to those over overly saturated areas. Now you want to let it kind of sit there for a few moments, um, let it kind of reactivate that pigment and then you come in with um, a clean towel or a clean spot on your towel and you just dab it up. You don't smear, you don't smudge, you don't wipe, you just dab and look at that after just one application of clear water. It lifted that much color and you do this as many times as you need to until you get the desired effect or the desired look that you are looking for. So, I mean, you can do it 
just one time. You can do it several times. I have never gone really, really deep with it. I don't think that you could ever fully lift the pigment up, but look at how much lighter that is. So much lighter. And I did it over the whole mousse. Um, you can't really tell in this shot, but he is much lighter than he was in the beginning. So now I am coming in with my rainbow of Karen Brush Marker Pros, and I am just coloring and painting up a rainbow of Christmas lights. So you can see I'm adding some color directly to the lights, and then I come in with my wet brush and I, I spread that color out to get, get a little bit of gradation of color, if you will. So um, I'm just having a blast with this. Like I love this whole rainbow effect. In fact, after Christmas, I'm ready for some rainbow. You'll be seeing some rainbow from me in some, some capacity, in some fashion, aside from these lights. Like these are so bright and happy and colorful and I just love them. But once I got those all colored in, then I realized, well, if this is going to be a scene, he needs to be sitting on something. So I just have some shades of blue, really light green, really light purple and a gray, and I just kind of blend them out and just really lightly paint them under him, a little bit darker shade under him to be the ground, and then I go around him to kind of be the sky or the scene. And then now I'm using my sec second largest hexagonal die to cut him out. And then of course you can see that I have come in with um, stamp and stamped out those sweet little um, light garlands around his head and I think that's really cute and if you look closely you can see that I kind of smudged um, the pigment that's in the lights. I thought that that added kind of like a glow, the glow of the light if you will. Um, may maybe you don't think it was a successful effort? I don't know. I, I think it looks that way. You guys let me know if it just looks messy or if it looks like um, you can see it as a glow. But anyway, once I got that all done, then I decided that I wanted some snows. So I bring in the It's Snowing stencil. This is a relatively new one. And I add those snowflakes. And then I was not happy with the color that I put below him. So I used the stencil again to make some hills, some snowy hills. But I'm not liking that blue. So we'll see how I change that in a bit. <laughs> now I'm adding my stickles. I added, it was like a sunshiny or sunflower yellow to all the yellow bulbs. And the rest of them just get this iridescent kind of glittery one. I don't know the name of this one. Um, I will try to find find that particular bottle and make sure that I list that downstairs as well. But do you think that I put my fingers in that? Because you would be absolutely right. <laughs> now keep in mind that you can stop. If you want to recreate this card or something similar, you stop at any point along the way. You, like I said, be true to you. I'm being true to me, and this is just what I do. So obviously I came in with some some of my snow, my Marby snow pen, because that's what I have to do when it's a snow scene. I don't know why, I just feel compelled. So I that, that Marby snow pen just adds the texture and dimension, and I just love it. And yeah, I actually added two layers below him to, to get all that um, snowy, snowy billowy goodness so now i'm finishing up this card base as you can see i scored it at the top at about an eighth of an inch and then i um added some really strong double-sided tear tape as well as some liquid glue because you know i need that wiggle room as i do on the card panel that i'm adding here i did a little bit of ink blending around the edges you can see they're a little bit darker and then of course some double-sided foam tape with that wet glue allows me some wiggle room so that I can get it lined up right where I want. And again, you can stop at any point along the way. This is an adorable card because it's an adorable image. But of course I have to come in with my white gel pen and add some highlights. And then, let me take a breath. <laughs> I remembered that I had not colored in the light strings. So I pull out my ink Inconic pens from Arteza and I'm just filling in those lines um, Yeah around those those white liars light wires <laughs> It helps when words come out correctly But while I had my ink onyx out I also wanted to add some more depth in some of those areas that I felt like I lifted too much So just a couple different shades of brown um, Actually just kind of scribbled in the color and then I came in with a wet um, wet paintbrush as you can see and just kind of blended it out a little bit 
Now there was just too much to put on here, so just let me kind of tell you what else I did. <laughs> I knew that for the mess that this mousse was in, the Good Grief word, word Dye was perfect for this. So I created some background paper and I die cut it out and of course I layered it up on the background. And then I also added a bow and I cut out two tags from the tag die set that I'm so obsessed with. And of course I used the same paper that I created the good grief with and I made some some tags out of those and I stamped them up and colored those little images as well and I added some bells and buttons and oh some charms and some beads holy cow like literally all the bells and whistles on this guy so y'all tell me what you think for my very last Christmas card for whimsy stamps did I overdo or was I true to me? I feel like I was true to me, but sometimes that's just too much for many people. So anyway, guys, thank you for joining me again today, especially on this, this occasion of my last Christmas card. I thank you for that. If you would, drop a comment downstairs. You know I love commenting and, and chatting with you down there. Join us over on the Whimsy Stamps Facebook page as well as interest, interest, Pinterest, and Instagram. <laughs> I'll catch you in all those places, guys. And until next time, this has been Nancy, the Handy Scandy for Whimsy Stamps, and I'm out. Mwah!